A possible vaccine for dengue was among topics for discussion at an experts meeting in Bangkok. The meeting also marks ASEAN Dengue Day, which is today. And joining us next from Bangkok is Professor Tiki Pang, a visiting professor at the Yong Lulin School of Medicine at NUS. Uh, professor, the big picture first, why is Southeast Asia and Singapore in particular so vulnerable to dengue? Basically, there are three reasons. First is climate. The region is um, in the tropics with high temperatures, lots of rain, high humidity, conditions that the mosquitoes like. Secondly, the region also is quite highly urbanized. And remember, dengue is an urban disease. We have big cities here in the region like Jakarta and Bangkok, around 11 million people. Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam is 9 million. Singapore, close to 6 million. So that's the second reason. The third reason is, of course, the amount of people movement through uh, travel and migrant workers. Uh, the region is very well connected between the, its different countries through quite extensive travel networks, either by land or by air, even by sea. Professor Pang, so it seems we certainly are susceptible for varying reasons uh, to dengue. And we know that in this region, there have been dengue warnings for Thailand, for Indonesia, Singapore as well. Uh, dengue cases rose by about two, over 200% in 2023 alone in this region. So what are the factors that are actually causing that rise as well that we're seeing? Okay, once again, I'm going to stick to three reasons. The first one is the possibility of climate change being important. We've seen these high temperatures in many countries in the region just in the last month and could be due, could be due to El Nino that has now officially been declared. The second reason is that during the COVID pandemic, the mosquito control efforts in many countries in the region could have been perhaps a bit less than optimal because of the diversion of resources and manpower and funding to fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. So perhaps mosquito control was not as effective during the pandemic, second reason. The third reason is obviously that travel seems to have almost returned to pre-pandemic levels. And once again, people movement through air, land and sea could be another factor that's contributing to the increase that we're seeing. Professor Pang, I take it uh, you are in Bangkok because you are attending this uh, discussion, experts meeting in Bangkok, uh, specifically around dengue. And one of the topics, as we mentioned before we crossed to you, was vaccine as a viable solution. Well, uh, taking a quick look, not everyone is actually eligible for this vaccine. You have had to have dengue before, before you even qualify for it. But as a solution to dengue, how, how much would you recommend it? Well, I'm going to be very clear on this, that the vaccine is only part of the solution, but a very important part. I think it needs to be part of a more integrated and holistic control strategy. So in addition to the vaccine, you need, number one, good surveillance, that is monitoring and tracking the cases. Number two, you need to take care of those who get sick and need hospitalization. Number three, of course, we already mentioned, you need to control the mosquito, the Aedes population. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, you need to always have community engagement and support through education and raising awareness and sustaining that community awareness and cooperation. Is studying vaccines as an option to fight dengue it's it's an exhaustive field of research and it's happening globally as well uh, professor pang can you give us an update into how far we've come with it how far uh well i've been working in this field for more than 40 years and the first point i would like to make is that in the last decade we have made very rapid progress after about 40 years of trying through research and development efforts. So that's the first point. The second point, which is being discussed in uh, Bangkok these last two days, is that there are two vaccines that have been authorized 
with another one coming up soon. Okay, so that's that's very encouraging progress. The third point is that these new vaccines that we are seeing are improved vaccines with good safety and efficacy profiles. So the answer is yes, definitely. We have some very good and very promising viable options when it comes to vaccination, even compared to say four or five years ago. Uh, Professor, a final question here. Uh, as you say, you've been working on this for decades now, and you, you say there has been rapid progress. But even so, by your own admission, during the COVID-19 pandemic, efforts to control mosquito populations became less than optimal because people tend to have a rather limited attention spans, let's put it that way. Um, do you find fatigue creeping in when it comes to People say, well, there's dengue. There will always be dengue. Look at this region. Look at the climate. Why should we try harder? Why should we make any more effort to stop this disease? Yes, I think the answer to that is, I mean, there are some things that are really beyond our control. Okay, and the first one is, of course, as the economies return to normal. The first reason is that the amount of people movement due to travel is just going to pick up. And that's something that we really can't control. It's just part of economic progress, if you like, and recovery. The second reason is that um, controlling mosquitoes is a very difficult challenge, okay? Uh, as you said, complacency has set in amongst many people, which needs sustained educational and awareness raising. And that's not easy to do. Singapore's done very well, but maybe the same cannot be said for other countries in the region. And what I heard today, this morning, in terms of advances, is that we are seeing dengue spreading into rural areas, okay? Uh, as I said before, it was mainly thought to be an urban disease. But if it spreads into rural areas, mosquito control is going to be even more difficult. And the third one, I think the third reason why it's so hard to control is once again related to economics. Uh, Singapore would be a very good example. Think of the number of construction sites that you are seeing around Singapore with the construction of new condominiums, HDB flats, new MRT stations. And it's well known that construction sites are sometimes some of the most uh, uh, active breeding sites for mosquitoes. Multiple reasons, but I just mentioned those three. Thank you very much, Professor Pang, for that. Prof. Tiki Pang there from the Yong Lulin School of Medicine at NUS.